Welcome to Politics and Why with Sky Behind the Curtain. This is our three questions in three minute series featuring all the candidates running in 2022. Yes. Three questions in three minutes with Assembly candidate Sammy Namir Olivares. He is running in Brooklyn. So let's get to know him a little bit. He launched his campaign relatively recently. So welcome to the show, Sammy. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, and why you're running for office. Yes, um, I am half Puerto Rican, half Dominican. I was a former journalist who wanted to tell stories about uh, inequality and human interest stories of our people. And I realized that through politics, there is so much uh, power and influence that could help our families, low income uh, women, people of color. And I, I live in Bushwick, I love my community. And especially after the pandemic, I realized how much uh, the state government can do to really implement change and food justice in housing, in healthcare and education. I grew up uh, with a single mother in public schools and uh, food stamps and housing assistant and uh, pu uh, public college and all of those programs really made me who I am today. So I wanted to uh, bring back um, the opportunities and the same access that I had to other families that are struggling in our community in New York City. So what was that transition like from going to journalist into politics? Because I could say I did the opposite. I was working as a lobbyist. Now I'm working as a journalist. <laughs> I guess that I never saw myself in politics because it was a field that was people that are not young or, you know, I was from low income background and I never saw myself as openly LGBTQ. Didn't see that as an opportunity for myself. I'm, I'm the son of a Dominican immigrant and there's a lot of racism and xenophobia around that. So for me, I didn't see myself. So I thought that communications and journalists, I could tell the stories of inequality of women, people of color, LGBTQ, those at the margins, those marginalized, um, that I wanted to uh, bring of people like my families, like my mother, single mother with disabilities, my grandmothers, um, the uh, victims of domestic violence, my father as an immigrant. And I wanted to tell stories like that. Um, but then in 2016, when the Trump election came, I saw how the media landscape have changed and how more difficult it was to really um, talk about those human interest stories when everything was eclipsed by the federal uh, politics. And I wanted to have a bigger impact and go into a field where I saw how my work, how my advocacy was going to transform people's lives very directly. And that is policy and politics. Now, in your particular election in the assembly, there is an incumbent there. So I'm wondering if you could share with us what your approach would be that may be different than the current person in that seat. I will be present. I will actually be in the community, being active, uh, working hand to hand with community leaders. I will listen to the concerns of our community and I will be actively fighting to bring resources to our community especially after in still in times of a pandemic, making sure that we're fighting to bring food justice, um, food equity to our district that is still fighting for affordability of food. I will be fighting for affordable housing, making sure that we have good opportunities for people to stay at home instead of uh, being in, you know, in match with the real estate developments and and the real estate lobby. I will make sure that I'm supporting our schools, uh, that they're fully funded, that they have programs and activities. Um, I will be a champion in, in Albany to what the issues of our community are, transportation, the buses, uh, we have Broadway Junction. And also, I will also be a, a active voice for climate change, which the state legislator have not passed bills in a couple of years uh, to really tackle climate change and also a voice for immigrants rights, uh, immigrant communities in my community that many of them don't have access to vote, but they're still residents in our district. So I will be present, active and really a champion, a fighter in Albany for them. Yeah, it's really about meeting the community where they are. And that's yes. to your point. Yeah. So so now, Sammy, tell us something fun or interesting about yourself that maybe doesn't normally come up on an interview. Yes, well, I love to dance salsa. I was uh, that salsa of uh, <laughs> in the parking. I was uh, born and raised in 
cumpleaños and birthdays and activities. So if I hear salsa, I need to dance. So I will drop anything that I have. Um, but I also very homey. Sometimes I love to garden. My father studied agronomy. So I didn't grow up with him, but I inherited the love for plants. So I have strawberries, cilantro, parsley, uh, tomatoes. Um, so yeah, and I also love painting and arts. I am very artistic. I and I self taught myself how to paint. So when I have some times, I really go and paint, and it's really a meditation experience for me. Yeah, it's wonderful. I think that being someone that works in public service, you have to be a problem solver, and I think it takes a creative person to be that way. So I see the the mashup between the two. So, so thank you, Sammy Namir Olvidares. It was really nice to meet you and get to know you as part of this three questions in three minute series and good luck to you in your campaign. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.